As promised, the angular flux source term can be broken up into a few components. S sub E, or an externally imposed source of neutrons, such as a neutron beam or point source. S sub S, the scattering source term, for representing neutrons coming from an energy E prime in a direction omega hat prime into the target energy E and omega, and direction omega hat. And finally, a fission source term, which represents neutrons that are born as a result of another atom splitting. Thus, the total neutron source is equal to the sum of these three neutron sources individually. Since external sources are by definition known quantities ahead of time that are defined in the problem, for now we're going to leave the discretion that just say that S of E is some function of the normal parameters. That is, the external neutron source is a function of position, energy, direction, and time. The scattering neutron source, however, is computed from the differential scattering cross-section, which we saw earlier in the course. We represent this as big sigma sub s, um, which is a function of the energy that we, the, neutro, the, the incident neutron has and the exiting neutron energy, as well as the difference in the direction, omega hat prime dot omega, omega hat. Uh, sometimes we also will express this in an alternative format where we say that E prime goes to E. In particular, the scattering source term is the result of integrating over all incident energies and all incident directions. Therefore, S sub S is the integral from zero to infinity with respect to DE prime and the integral over all omega with respect to D omega prime of the scattering cross-section, the differential scattering cross-section, times the angular flux for E prime and omega prime. Rather than leaving it there, it's common to perform a Legendre expansion on the scattering source term. If you're unfamiliar with Legendre expansion, it's very similar to Taylor expansion, with the exception that we now use Legendre polynomials as the basis, rather then x to the n divided by n factorial. The Legendre polynomial of order L is defined as p sub L of x is equal to 1 over 2 to the L times L factorial times the Lth derivative with respect to x of x squared minus 1 to the Lth power. Legendre polynomials can also be defined recursively as L plus 1 times the PL plus 1 term equals 2L plus 1 times X times PL of X minus L times PL minus 1 of X. The first few orders are given here. Note that the zeroth order is simply equal to 1 and the first order is simply equal to X or is linear. Here we see the first six orders of the Legendre polynomials plotted as a function of x. Note that both the domain and range are defined from negative 1 to 1. More so than just the plain Jane Legendre polynomials, the associated Legendre polynomials are important for spherical harmonics, which we'll get to in a moment. Let's first define the associated Legendre polynomials as p sub l m of x. For integer values of m that are between negative l and l, the associated Legendre polynomial is defined as seen here. With the recursion relation seen in this expression. Spherical harmonics are therefore defined for angles theta and phi which we'll note in our lingo make up the s solid angle omega hat as y l m of theta and phi equals the square root of c l m which is defined below times e to the i m phi where i is the imaginary number times the associated Legendre polynomial of the cosine of theta. 
Using asterisk to define the complex conjugate, we'll note that the Legendre polynomial of the lth order of the dot product between the incident and exiting angles is equal to 1 over 2L plus 1 times the sum from of the sum of M equals negative L to L of the spherical harmonic, the complex conjugate of the mth order spherical harmonic of the exiting angle of the incident angle times the spherical harmonic of the exiting angle. Substituting in the mu from before, which is equal to omega hat dot omega hat prime equal to cosine theta, the Legendre polynomial of mu is equal to the following expression seen here. Therefore, we can represent the lth order of the scattering cross-section as sigma sub SL fr uh, from a, an incident energy E prime to E equals one half of the integral of negative one to one of the scattering cross section as a function of angle times the Legendre polynomial of mu d mu, which can be seen here. Therefore, the Legendre expansion of the differential scattering cross-section is sigma sub s of e prime to e uh, and mu equals the sum over all orders l from 0 to infinity of 2l plus 1 times the sigma s sub l times the Legendre polynomial p sub l of mu. We can now substitute this version of the scattering cross-section back into our scattering source term. Doing so yields the following double sum and double integral. To simplify this a bit, also note that we can represent the scalar flux in terms of spherical harmonics as well. The scalar flux of the L and Mth order is equal to the integral of over all incident angles d omega prime of the spherical harmonic of the l mth order of omega hat prime times the angular flux of uh, omega omega hat prime so that the angular flux is equal to the double sum of the spherical harmonic of omega hat times the scalar flux of the L mth order. And so finally the scattering source term is equal to the sum over all L from 0 to infinity of the sum from all M negative L to L of the complex conjugate of the spherical harmonic of omega hat multiplied by the integral over all energies from zero to infinity of the scat differential scattering cross-section of the lth order that goes from E prime to E multiplied by the scalar flux of the L mth order.